for it. We're doing it. It is time normally for Tuesdays with Tina, even though it's Wednesday. I had to reschedule last night. We're going to be talking about the PSA injection, some tips on angulation and stabilization. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. And like I said, normally I come to you guys live on a Tuesday afternoon, early evening, but uh, life was kind of lifey and I was exhausted after six weeks of uh, quite a bit of travel, my body said, you need sleep. <laughs> I just kind of was like, okay, I'll listen to you. I need sleep. So I went to bed early, really early <laughs> last night. So uh, thank you guys for being here. As a reminder, I do come in weekly with sharing tips with you all about injections. and I save them and I have started to put them on the Teacher Tina RDH YouTube channel as well. So this will be found there. So um, if you want to go back and find it, you can always go to the Teacher Tina RDH YouTube channel to get that. So as I said, we're going to be discussing the PSA injection, some tips for angulation, discussing the angulation and also some stabilization with that. And, you know, what's really funny is when I planned on this, I didn't realize I was like, it was almost exactly a year ago today that I discussed the same topic. So it must have just been one of those moments where it was like, it's time. <laughs> it's time to review this again. So I've got my little trusty skull here with me and we'll discuss that. So the things about the PSA injection is that it, it really is geometry in motion. It really, really, really is. And, um, because, right, we're trying to get all the way back up into this zone uh, with our anesthetic. And we've got these things called cheeks that are in the way. And so we can't just go straight there, right? How many times, right, have you wished that your patient could just check their cheeks and their tongue at the front door anytime we're doing any work, right? You're like, they're just, it's just an obstacle there. So we have to do some modifications to our angulation to be able to achieve uh, getting to that zone right up there, right up, right up above the um, maxillary tuberosity for that injection. So depending upon which textbooks, oh, I just dropped my school. <laughs> Sorry for all that loud noise. Depending upon which textbooks you're looking at, uh, there's usually anywhere from two or three different 45 degree angulations that we're looking at. And I want to show you those angulations and then I'll give you some tips to look for those. So the first angulation that we always talk about is 45 degrees away from the midline. So if here's the midline, we're going to look 45 degrees away from that. So here's the midline, we're going to look 45 degrees away from that. And I'm going to adjust my little phone down here. So here you go, Instagram. Sorry. I accidentally hit go live before I was 100% ready. So you guys are really getting me raw. <laughs> so midline and then 45 degrees away from the midline. That is the first of the three 45 degree angulations. So if this is zero, that's 90 degrees. That's the 45 degrees away. So when we talk about 45 degrees away from the midline or out, that's the, the one we're talking about. The other one that is really important is the 45 degrees from the maxillary occlusal plane. So if I rotate to the side, so hopefully uh, my volume will catch me here. So if this is level, okay, this is level, this would be perpendicular, we're going to go 45 degrees down this way. So that's 45 degrees down from the maxillary occlusal plane. So those are, that's the second one. Now, in my opinion, those two are the most important ones to be looking at, okay? Those are the most important ones. But the third one is 45 degrees into the frontal plane. So if you remember, our frontal plane, it's kind of like, it's what, if we were to try to take and just slice ourselves in an anterior and posterior fashion, like, you know, like if you were wearing a headband that just did a shh, slice all the way down. That's our frontal plane. So the 45 degree to the frontal plane would be if we're here like this, we're going to be tilting back towards the ear, towards that frontal plane in that zone. So basically really what it means is get the syringe in the mouth, right? You're just going, I got to tilt back to get the syringe in the mouth. So that is really, that's what that means. So uh, that third one, eh, in my opinion, not as crucial as the 45 degrees away from the midline and the 45 degrees down away from the maxillary occlusal plane. So 
ways that you can assure that you have that. And, and, you know, this comes up a lot, especially around this time of year as uh, especially hygiene students and dental hygiene educators are working with their students on the PSA injection because this is one of the ones that the board loves to test us on. And it's geometry in motion, so it's technically difficult as well. So um, things that you can do to help yourself uh, get those three 45 degree angulations is one, get the syringe back into the mouth. Two, is if you just basically follow uh, the imaginary line from the eyebrow down towards the opposite shoulder, like that, that's gonna help you get your 45 degrees away from the midline and 45 degrees away from the maxillary occlusal plane. So if I'm like this, sorry, I'm looking at, you know, kind of mirroring myself here. So if I'm like this, if I draw that line, which also follows along with that nasolabial groove, I get that 45 degree away angulation from the midline. But as I'm bringing my thumb ring, if I'm doing a, a syringe towards my shoulder, that also gets me that 45 degrees angulation from the maxillary occlusal plane. Okay, hopefully you can see that follow that line, that will help you get to where you need to be. Okay, so got my handy dandy pretend needle here. So I won't accidentally poke myself. I've done that before on these on these reviews. Okay, so we're going to be coming into the mouth, 45 degrees from the uh, midline, 45 degrees up down from the maxillary occlusal plane. And that's we, that's where we end up. Pretty nice, huh? Kind of cool. It's a really easy way to follow through that process. Hello, Joffrey on Instagram. Happy to see you. Um, so that's how you, for your angulations. Again, remember this is recorded and will be put on the Teacher Tina RDH YouTube channel. So if you missed the first half of this, uh, just head there so that way you can get the rest of that information. Okay, so tip, tips for stabilization. Oftentimes when doing this injection or really any, any injections, honestly, uh, but especially like our maxillary injections, oftentimes we'll be like chicken winging it or we will be, um, uh, when we go to insert and we're aspirating or depositing, we may pull out of the tissue a little bit or end up inserting a little bit more. So when you are doing, especially the PSA injection, there's a couple of things you can do is when you're using your retraction finger, you, you know, you go, reach all the way back in, palpate, move that buccal mucosa back and retract, but you can use your thumb as stabilization. You can also use your retraction finger as a little knuckle there for stabilization as well. So you can do that. So that way when you go to insert your 16 millimeters and then you go to aspirate, you're not pulling back and withdrawing all the way out or you're not inserting deeper. Okay, so that's one of the, one of the things that you can do. Um, somebody just asked a question. So let me just take a look at that. Uh, she's a student, has a patient with exostoses and making the 45 degree. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm going to talk about that. Thank you for asking that question. So the question was exostoses in the PSA. So yes, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll throw that in there. Bonus tip. Okay. So when you're retracting, um, if it's your same side, so if you're right-handed, uh, use your left index finger to retract. If you like to use, say, a retraction device, like a Minnesota retractor, a tongue blade, a mouth mirror. What you can do is when you're retracting it back, you can also kind of rest on your retraction hand, rest the barrel on your retraction hand or on your retraction device to help stabilize you that way. Other thing is that like if you stand up, that, that's really helpful as well. If you are using your hand for retraction, if you're doing the opposite side of you, so if you're right-handed, if you're doing the left-handed maxillary area, instead of using your finger, use your thumb to retract. That'll keep your shoulders down. Keep your elbows near your side, and then you'll be able to go ahead and, and make that stabilization there um, in regards to that. For mandibular injections, this is all about the PSA, but I'm going to throw that in there for mandibular injections. Again, um, just I stand, keep your elbows to your side, and uh, there's tips to, and tricks to that, which I might have to share at another live session. All right, so the question that was posed on Instagram, so thank you, uh, I think it was Pamela that asked that question, was when you have a patient with exostoses, okay, they've got that nice little bony growth right on the facial process, a uh, facial aspect of the maxillary process, what, um, what are some of your tricks and tips on how to create that, right? So what I would say is this, one, 
somebody would have to have really large exostoses for it to be a super huge issue. Um, let me see if I've got a little something here that I can quickly kind of, this is one of those moments I wish I had some tape sitting on my desk, but it's, it's like three feet that way, too far off camera. <laughs> so like, say they do, they have like, you know, maybe this little, we'll pretend that this little piece of foam right here is some exostoses, right? That would be a freaking huge exostoses, friends. <laughs> I'd be at that point in time, we're, I'm, we're worried about food impaction getting in there. <laughs> but basically what you want to do, one, is really retract that cheek out, retract that lip out so you can open up that vestibule and create a nice big opening, right? Like, it's my own mouth. I wash my hands. But you want to pull, <laughs> really open that up, pull that cheek out so that way you create this nice bowl up in there, okay? And then if there is that excess toasties, what you're gonna do is when you go to insert, um, you know, ideally, right, we're, we're inserting at the height of the mucobuccal fold, right, right here's the alveolar process, the, here is the, the um, alveolar mucosa coming off and we're going into the buccal or the labial mucosa, right? Normally we're gonna be right at that height. If you've got excess toasties there, you may have to come out into the tissue just a little bit more out into the the uh, cheek or the lip just a smidgen the alveolar mucosa sorry the um, buccal or labial mucosa a smidgen I'm not talking like way like like here we're just coming out maybe a couple of millimeters to avoid that bony contact uh, avoid that exostoses and then um, you'll get up to your point of insertion and then go ahead now and insert now if the if the, if the um, lack of a better word, shaft of the needle, because <laughs> that's what this is called, is the shaft. If the shaft of the needle, the hub, or the barrel of this syringe touch that exostosis, it's totally fine. We just want to make sure that the sharp pokey end doesn't bump into that exostosis on our way in. So you may have to, you know, do your insertion a little further out and then uh, travel up. And your angulation, maybe you'll be closer to a 48 degree angulation instead of a 45 degree angulation. But some people would have to have really large excess toasties. And normally those excess toasties don't go right up into the vestibule. They're actually fairly low. So hopefully that answers your question. And if somebody has a great picture of excess toasties that they want to share with me and I can, I because I wish I had one, I don't. But if somebody has a great picture um, and wants to share it with me, I can draw some, some images on that as well. I keep forgetting to, to snag one anytime I see one. So. All right, friends, with that being said, thank you again for your patience as I could not do a live last night. My, my brain and my body just said no. And I will leave you with the quote for this week, which was from Michael J. Fox. And boy, even more so, like this quote really sits with me because, um, well, let me read the quote and then I'll tell you why. It, the quote is, I am careful not to confuse excellence with perfection. Excellence I can reach for, perfection is God's business. And uh, for one, struggle is real with me on that one, but I really got hit with it hard last night as I had two, mind you, two different hygienists who are going through their anesthesia certification, looking at one of the resources that I've had that I have used for three years, you guys. Three years. It is a, it's an anesthetic dosaging chart guideline that talks about the anesthetic dosage, how much we can use for our ASA patients, all the things. And there were two errors on there. Each person, each student noticed these errors. One saw one, another one saw the other one. And I was like, oh my golly gee, I've been using this resource for three years and I never noticed it. And nobody else noticed it either. And, you know, two people in one night found different, two different <laughs> errors. And uh, I really started to spiral and the struggle was real. And I just had to remember, I, I, I'm doing my best and so grateful and thankful for those that are able to see these moments and correct them so I can correct them before it gets too long. So thank you, friends. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the, the question. I appreciate that, Pamela, for the uh, question that you asked about exostosis and PSA. And if you missed any of this, remember, go to the Teacher Tina RDH on YouTube and you can watch this. I will be, it's recording and I will be uploading it to that YouTube channel in just a moment. 
And if you are also a uh, podcast listener to the RDH Coast to Coast, uh, we will have a new episode releasing here in the ne next 24 hours. So you'll be able to hear that as well. So thank you, friends. Uh, have a great week. I will see you next week. And, um, and ask me, pose some questions for me. Let me know. What should we talk about next week? Okay. All right, friends. Have a great night or day, whatever time zone you're in. Bye-bye. <laughs>